Exclusividade no V-Space. Saiu coisas exclusivas aqui, hein? MIBR chega a, a acordo verbal e encaminha a contratação de aspas. A organização acerta com o um badalado jogador brasileiro da Leviatã para 2025, por Bruno Provolone. Depois de se acertar com a Leviatã, o MIBR chegou a um acordo verbal com aspas para a próxima temporada competitiva de Valorante. De acordo com a apuração do V-Space, a organização brasileira acertou todos os detalhes com o badalado jogador brasileiro. Eles estão colocando esse badalado de meme já, né? É de meme, é de meme. Tipo, porque é todo mundo fala, eles já estão tipo, metendo esse badalado aí. Resta apenas a assinatura do contrato, que neste momento é tratado como mera formalidade. As negociações entre os dois aceleraram nesta última semana e tiveram um final feliz nessa terça-feira. O fator fode com quem, aspas, tem grande proximidade desde trabalhar junto na Laude foi o principal diferencial para que o jogador tenha aceitado o projeto do MIBR. Vale contextualizar que, conforme antecipado pelo V-Space, o MIBR já tinha um acordo com a Leviatã desde o dia 26 de outubro para adquirir aspas. Só que, antes de acertar com o próprio aspas, a organização já havia começado a testar lineups com ele. Entre os nomes testados, Cortesi e Xenon. Xenon voltou do CS. Xenon voltou do CS pra testar, velho. Além disso, o MIBR deve ter o argentino NZR, liberado pela Fúria pra ouvir propósito de outros times. As duas organizações, inclusive, estão em negociação. Ó! Oh! Ó! Oh! Bomb Cripto me deixou, me deixou com dinheiro. Vai, MIBR! Abre o bolso! Antes de tudo isso, o MIBR já estava com o um elenco praticamente certo para o VCT Américas e indicava que faria... Apenas uma mudança, com a escolha entre QCK, Exloud e GoRVN, ex Hero Base, para a vaga deixada por Rich. Na época, a atual lineup da organização, que tem Mazin, Artizin, Lias e Pala, seria mantida. Agora o cenário mudou e apenas Artizin tem chance de ser o remanescente. Caralho, só o Artizin. Procurados pelo V-Space para um posicionamento sobre o assunto, MBR e Leviathan optaram por não comentar, velho. Caralho. Aspas voltará a atuar para a Comissão Brasileira cerca de um ano depois de deixar a Laude no fim de 2023. Pela Leviathan, Aspas teve uma pequena temporada, uma temporada de 2024 de destaque, além de ter tido diversas estatísticas de jogadores. Né? O brasileiro ajudou o time a conquistar a segunda etapa do VST Américas e a terminar o top 3 do Valorant Champions. Caralho, brother. O Aspas vai para o MIBR. Mano, isso é... Essa é a notícia mais inesperada da janela de transferência. Assim, na história do esporte. Na história do esporte, não sei. Mas, mano, quem ia imaginar que o Aspas ia parar no BBR depois de ser sondado pela Bleed por todos os times lá de fora, e o caralho a quatro, o Feneric, e o cara, tipo, bum, MBR. Sei lá, velho. Mano, o MBR vai montar um super time, vai colocar na mão do Aspas e falar, carrega nós. Isso é louco, velho. Isso é louco, mano. Guys, um recado rapidinho antes de seguir com o vídeo, se liga aí. Kaspersky é o mais novo patrocinador do canal, o melhor e maior antivírus do mundo, que não é só um antivírus. Kaspersky é dividido em três planos, Standard, Plus e Premium. E dentro de cada plano tem algumas coisas, eu vou destacar as principais aqui pra você. Primeiro, Kaspersky tem proteção de antivírus, anti-malware e anti-ransomware. Além disso, ele tem otimização de desempenho, de inicialização, para você ligar mais rápido e ficar melhor, limpeza no espaço de disco, entre outras coisas. VPN rápida e ilimitada para quem trabalha com isso. E muitas, e muitas, e muitas coisas mesmo. Se liga, se você usar o meu cupom, o cupom TICHINHA, no link do Casper, vai ficar aqui, você ganha mais desconto em cima do desconto atual, beleza? Então não esquece de usar meu cupom e bom Casper aqui pra vocês. Essa terça-feira teve mais um episódio do Play Chat e um dos assuntos comentados foi o suposto novo elenco da Loud, com Vini e DJzin. E legendamos esse trecho aqui para conferirmos. Vini e DJzin, eu acho que são reportados para estar jogando nesse one. DJzin não estão muito excited para estar jogando Loud, não vou mentir, porque esse cara should have been in tier one um after the, the the first year that he had um and he's a fantastic neon player as well so he kind of missed the boat in that regard as well i think he would have been a stellar player to be playing in tier one for for any team but um I, i'm excited about that this this kind of prospect yeah, i i know there's there's concerns about loud maybe not reaching the same heights as they have before in the past but um i think that they are they're looking in the right areas for talented players 
Yeah, I think that's fair. This guy can play a lot of stuff as well. He loves a he loves a chamber, right? They he used to play chamber on split, yeah. which is like the yeah. one map that maybe you shouldn't be playing chamber on. So we'll <laughs> see if they lean uh see if they lean heavy onto that in some other maps as well. But yeah, DJ Zins I, I feel like he's a bit of a beast. Um I mean I like you were saying, I don't think this team will reach the heinz Like I think that's I think we kinda of have to lower the expectations now. Because they've they've lost a lost a good amount of players. There is oh. no team that epitomizes the changing of the guard and the fact that we're in a new era more than loud to me. This was the Brazilian super team that formed yeah. with like the best pieces of multiple different teams, brought up the absolute best talent out of like ranked basically for Aspas and less. And now they've lost all of those pieces that really make them who they are. The, the, they've got Pancada, but he took a year out and wasn't even with them for a while. And he might not even be on smokes. I don't even know because they have Pancada and Tui's on the team heading into next year. It feels like Cowanzine is the best player that they, like a veteran presence that they have. Vinny's going to be yeah. IGLing and he wasn't IGLing for his former squad. It, like, there's, there's, there's a, a lot, lot of, of ifs. There's a lot yeah. of ifs. <laughs> yeah. I, I can see a world where they make the double smokes work with two years in Pancada. Because we listen, the map oh, pool, yeah. the map pool is gonna have a lot of big maps. Listen, we're already seeing it on like on maps like Abyss, but um, I know Lotus got taken out and Icebox with it. But um, I, I mean, you got Pearl coming back in too. So I think that there's there's potential, especially with the Astro Bush. Like you can you're gonna see some double controller potentially being played by a lot of teams. Um, still, I guess. Um, but yeah, despite the ifs, I am cautiously optimistic for the whole team because because I think one of the ifs, which is Pancada. Like, I've kind of excused the roles, the overlap of the roles. But Pancada, I think, when if he doesn't have to communicate in English, because it was constantly talked about, like, that they would struggle with communication aspects with Pancada playing in, in, in that, on top of him switching to a new role when he was playing in Sen. Now he's he's communicating in Portuguese, and he gets to play his old role again. When we saw glimpses of it, like, there, there were times where you could see the old Pancada. Like, you can tell he's still an incredibly skilled player when he was playing on Sen. So I'm, I'm excited for him to be rejoining a, a, a roster where he's not going to be having those... Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> BBL Zelsis. Yeah. I don't know. Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> I lost my train of thought for a sec. What was yeah, that was about? left on the screen for a very long time. Though. It was. <laughs> yeah, it really was. I just wanted to make <laughs> yeah. sure that you guys saw that Pinkata tweeted it. I, just wasn't <laughs> <laughs> randomly. I think if you get Pancada back to his, like, tippity top performances playing Smokes... Oh, that's amazing for them. But it necessitates Tui's being pushed onto like Sentinel, for example. And Tui's is a duelist player who joined Loud to play Smokes, who is then being moved to Sentinel as to like make room for new players coming in. It just seems a bit weird what this team is doing. It feels a bit like they're working with the scraps of the meat now instead of the juice, juicy choice cuts. <laughs> and... When you have, um, when you have the level of competition that you have in Americas, and when you have MIBR now with Aspas, Noswa potentially, and whatever else kind of talent Aspas can attract there, I think the idea that Loud is going to be head and shoulders above the other Brazilian teams is like it's it's not even we're not even going to be starting from that uh, concept anymore at the beginning of next year. Yeah, I think you touched on the the best point there, which is. The competition is just so much harder now. Because, like, actually, on paper, so like two shot years you. ago or, like, a year ago, you look at this and you're like, that's not, a, that's not a bad roster. Like, they'll probably do it right. But, dude, everyone's got really big upgrades this year, I feel like. Like, 90% of the teams, most of them in America's, have, have got an upgrade. And, yeah, I, I guess I'm just worried because of that. Because these are, like... It's just like the only reason that we're talking like so negatively is just that most of these teams are getting upgrades and, and you would say that this is a downgrade and that's, um, yeah, that's, that's Would not you great. still take Loud over 2G? Essential team? I don't know. I'm TG not sure. Look, TG look pretty good. Yeah. Imagine it, it, it could be the be fourth best Brazilian team. It's, it's entirely possible. But also when you lose Sadak who's been mm. definitely the best IGL in the region. Uma coisa o cara tá falando, ah, todo mundo deu upgrade e a Loud deu um downgrade. Como é que a Loud dá um upgrade, velho? Perdeu Asas, perdeu Les, perdeu Sadak. Como é que dá um upgrade disso, brother? Tipo, como é que tem algo que é melhor que isso disponível fácil no mercado, tá ligado? Não tem, velho. 
section for like the entire time that he's been there and you lose less who's been utterly incredible and you've already lost aspas oh, and you know I'll sassy see. in the past before as well it's somewhat inevitable that this team is not going to look like the same roster that came before it yeah, I agree. Lose, losing less is really big. And the the thing that do you know the thing that worries me a little bit, and we don't really know um, the insides of the team that much, um, is like comp wise, this team tried some weird stuff as well. Like we got to remember that this this was didn't, a team that was. What you mean that you don't Phoenix. like the Sadak on Neon? No, wasn't it Sadak who said he gave more free reign to the coaches though? To I era. swear to God, but, he was throwing those motherfuckers under the yeah. bus so damn yeah. hard, man. Yeah, he Sadak was like, he was Neon. like. I am giving full responsibility to the coaches. <laughs> Let me play Neon! <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, see, it, it's weird uh, because sometimes you like want to clear, your, I've been in a similar situation where you like want to clear your name and be like, I had nothing to do with this. Like, yeah. this is not me. Um, so I think it was one of those moves where it's like, I, he's just like, man, I, want, I don't want my name attached to this. I've, I've been in a similar boat for the, the bind solo vibe. Yeah, that, oh, that, yeah. that, that was that was something very similar. So I can understand that thing. But it's one of the things you're from inside the team. Like unless you're inside the team, we're never going to know. Could have been his idea, threw someone under the bus, or it could have just been some. <laughs> he has cooked some, some crazy like, comps in the past, though. Like he definitely has cooked some unusual shit. Like remember that like breach Astra comp he was running on Pearl. Where he would like yeah. stuck, uh, yeah. suck, suck, oh, stun. Yeah, like they're obsessed yeah. with like stun, breach suck for a, bit. for a main control. Yeah, and then like the, the, yeah, they did the breach uh, Phoenix KO comp at the start of the year on Ascent as well. Yeah, no, um, the, Fe the Phoenix stuff was Phoenix. mental. Yeah, they're doing on Sunset as well. Like, oh, it's all calm and cool this year. It's back. The Phoenix. I, I was, that's, the, my, that's my only worry for those little <laughs> motherfuckers. <laughs> but, but, but that's how we're gonna find out who's like. Who where the was doing is. it? Yeah, that's what we're gonna see. We're gonna see if think... Louds do some mad stuff, then we know it's the coaches. If Sadak starts doing some crazy stuff on K Cop, we know it's Sadak. So Dude, can you imagine if it is Sadak? Put up with that shit. Dude, if it's Probably Sadak not. though, and you have Sadak cooking like crazy, you have Angel cooking like crazy, you have Yampi cooking like crazy, all in the same region, yeah, all playing against each other. Yeah, the best place to watch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Man, I just seen my cousin. Uma coisa a torcida brasileira. Uma coisa na torcida brasileira tem que ter em mente. Acabou. Realmente acabou o super time brasileiro. Acabou. Talvez o IBR seja um super time brasileiro ou só seja um bom time brasileiro. Ter a Laude 2022, 2023 de novo, acabou, mano. Acabou. A gente precisa criar coisa nova agora. Novos talentos, novas coisas, tá ligado? Eu estou com medo. Deixa eu levar o prato na cozinha, lavar a mão e nós vamos fazer alguma coisa.